Welcome back folks to the World of Tanks Competitive Gaming Guide for Dummies. So the purpose of this video is to teach you the basics, the skills and mechanics that will help you to become better at the game and possibly somewhat more competitive in a tournament like setting such as esports or clan wars. Now disclaimer first, the purpose of this video is only about the basics. It does not detail specific strategies or tactics to ensure guaranteed victory because there's no miracle formula. There's no miracle 100% victory chance tactic. It does not exist since there are counter plays, counter strategies, and counter maneuvers as well as the RNG factor. So not everything is set and I cannot teach you the personal experiences or decision making process. Sometimes I'm more cowardly, sometimes I'm more yolo-y, if that's a term. So it's based on your decision making process and reactionary instincts. So I cannot teach you those, but think about this video like this. Metaphorically, it's a fitness trainer. So it gets you into the shape of playing on the game field rather than the head coach of teaching you where to go or what strategies to take. So. This video is basically for your fitness to keep up with your body build with other players rather than teaching you the special strategies or plays on the football field, American football, whatever, metaphors. So here is the index. So we're going to talk about the physical preparations, then the pregame selections and choices, and then basic tank techniques and mechanics and vehicle tier lists. And then we'll finish up with my insights and the epilogue. So let's get started with the physical preparations. So what's basically the physical preparations? Well, it's outside of the game that you could do to alter the game. Namely for the PC, it's your frame rate and your internet. So you should run World of Tanks at 60 frames per second and less than 100 milliseconds of ping latency. So if you run at low frame rates, at high ping, you would have trouble with shooting your targets, adjusting your tanks with different maneuvers, and driving into a ditch or into the water. So a bunch of other problems rises from your computer's insufficient handling of the game. So make sure you perform daily checks, update your drivers, utilize third-party software to see which areas need fixing and defragging or cleaning. So a bunch of stuff. Use system requirements lab to check the capabilities of your computer. And I have a good software company, Die Orbit. So Orbit. So this company is very good with a bunch of softwares that helps adjusting and cleaning your computer. So increasing the RAM capacity and deleting some useless stuff and turn off some useless applications. So very good process or software. Highly recommend you check them out. So here is the miscellaneous. Turn off non-essential applications. Use task manager to end process on these applications. So applications like Skype updates or Adobe updates. Don't need those, right? I'm doing tournaments. I'm not having the time to worry about Skype. So turn those off. Also turn off various softwares with auto updating options like Adobe softwares, pointless, so, eh, Windows update, don't need it yet. So turn off various devices that also utilize your internet, mainly your phone. So turn those off using your Wi-Fi and also make sure your internet won't be interfered with your gaming session. So go beat up your cousins or your sisters or your brothers or your roommates for taking off and stealing the internet. So a bunch of small stuff, but still important. Now here is the in-game preparations that you should consider. So turn off motion blur. Motion blur is one of the most irritating things about the game. I mean, it's pretty by far. It's pretty, but it's not useful. So leading your shots becomes a lot more difficult when you're blurred and you cannot tell the targets apart. Also, you cannot trace your reticle as easily. So turn off motion blur. It's useless. Just 
You don't need it. Also, pro players would turn off special graphical effects such as the foliage. So basically, you cannot tell the difference between the bush and the grass. And sometimes you cannot tell where the ground starts and where the ground ends. And you cannot judge how much cover your enemies have. So I have two pictures to demonstrate, but yeah, pro players would turn off special foliage and the swaying of the trees. So that would hinder your aiming reticle and your judgments on enemy move enemy movements. So miscellaneous also adjust the gamma so you can tell the contrast reliably because you cannot tell tanks from camo to actual foliage. That would be a problem. So you can separate those vehicles out and shoot the vehicles, shoot your enemies. Also adjust the reticle so you can see the crosshairs reliably. So small details, but very important. And here is what I'm talking about, about the foliage. So as you can see, this is with the max setting right here. And this is with the bare minimum setting. So you can see the difference that this bush have. So I thought this was the ground right here. So I thought this was the ground and I could only shoot at the turret of the KV-4. It turns out that's not the case. You can shoot the lower plate or the middle plate, which is easier to penetrate than the machine gun mini turret on top, the mini cupola turret. So yeah, it's a big difference. And sometimes you think that you're hauled down when you're actually not. So I thought this was the line and my hull was covered. So I'm hauled down and I have a bouncy turret. Nope, that's not the case. You can easily shoot at your lower plate because this is not actually the ground. So make sure to adjust accordingly. And here is about ergonomics. So ergonomics is basically the effectiveness, effectiveness of your positioning. So your keyboard layout and your posture. So make sure you sit upright with comfortable and effective key settings because when you're panicking, you have to press buttons quickly, such as repair tracks or fire extinguishers. But if you press the wrong button, you get dead. <laughs> if you cannot put out the flames, you burn to death. So make sure you have comfortable settings for your keys as well as your back because fatigue and muscle cramps is a big deal. If you get carpal tunnel syndrome while playing a tournament, you will mess up your shots, give away your position, and you will cost your team the game. So, not going to be that effective, right? So make sure you sit properly with good comfortable layouts on your keys and mouse. And here is the pre-game selections and choices. So the physical ones are have a good night rest, simple enough, have a high energy meal before the tournament, and finish with your personal digestive cycles the toilet, the latrine, obviously, and there are various stimulants to improve reaction time, basically caffeine or energy drinks. So you can drink a lot of coffee or monster energy drink or Red Bull, if you will. Now here is the in-game selections. So crews, use vehicles you have accustomed to and have the experience in. So fully trained crews is a lot better than 75% or 50%, obviously. Also for crew skills, the main three is Sixth Sense, Camouflage, and Repairs. That's the main ones. That's what tournament players always use. The secondary ones are Brothers in Arms, Recon, Situational Awareness, Snapshot, Off-Road Driving, and Safe Stowage. So if you already have the top three, have the secondaries. Equipments for damage-oriented vehicles is Rammer, Vertical Stabilizer, and enhanced gun lane drive. For support oriented, it's coated optics and vents. The rest of the equipments are mostly useless because they are conditional equipments such as spall liners or toolbox. You have to get hit for those to work, right? So the main purpose of those are for you to take a lot of damage, but in tournament settings, you would try not to get hit because it's a lot of gold shells. So do not get hit. So basically, those equipments are thrown out. They are useless. They do not contribute to you winning. Also for consumables, large repair kits, 
large first aid kit, national food thing, so the food, and fire extinguishers, the automatic fire extinguishers. So that's it. Do not use the regular ones because they don't provide the bonus and they're not as effective. Sometimes a lot of players would use gas, but that's fringe situations, so it doesn't usually happen. As for the ammo loadout, make sure you have a few high explosive shells to reset base capture. Make sure not to fully go with all gold shell because sometimes you would want the high velocity of the shells rather than the high penetration of shooting low armor targets like light tanks. So do not fully go all gold. And make sure you paint the outside of your tanks for better camouflage rating. So small details. And here are the basic tank tactics and mechanics techniques. So the first one is the obvious haul down tactics. It's the exposure of your only or turret and basically positioning to cover up your hull. So therefore utilizing your turret's armor and your gun depression to shoot at enemies and to avoid return fire. So minimize exposure to return fire and mainly exploited by vehicles with above average gun depression. So here you can see example. I'm playing my T29 utilizing the hill right here to shoot at enemies on the other side of the hill and they cannot shoot at my hull they can only shoot at my turret and it's a small target as well so they're missing that's basically hull down position and here is circle strafing so what is circle strafing it's basically a fast vehicle outmaneuvering a slow traversing vehicle so you can shoot at the sides and the rear so the ability to engage an enemy and hopefully avoiding return fire because their turrets are slow or they don't even have a turret with a superstructure. So utilize speed and mobility on a few select vehicles and it's mainly light tanks and medium tanks but you could do it with heavies. So I suggest you use auto aim so you can focus on the circling and do not drive into a ditch or into a wall. That's very important. But here is the example. So you can see that the Scorpion G has a low turning traverse and easily flanking him and circle strafe him. And here is side scraping. Side scraping is utilizing the side armor to bounce shots while you're poking out to bait out shots and return fire. So it's mainly utilized by heavy tanks for close quarter combat or city combat. But here is the example. There is the IS-4, I'm playing the T-34. He is side scraping and he's bouncing a lot of shots, as you can see. I'm also side scraping, but they're not shooting at me, so that's good. But he has better side armor. So the main purpose is for your side armor to eat the shots or the tracks to eat the shots. And hopefully they bounce. And here is the wiggling slash vibrating tactics. So you can wiggle your turret or your hull. So basically the main purpose of this technique is to throw off enemy shots. So enemies will shoot at your weak spots such as your cupolas or driver hatch. And if you wiggle, it's harder to hit, right? So here's the example. As you can see, I'm wiggling my T-34's turret and he did not shoot at my cupola. He tried to, but he missed. So yeah, wiggling does save you from getting hit. And here is detracking to outmaneuver. So a lot of vehicles have slow traverse and it's a lot easier if they have their tracks blown off and could only traverse the turret or could not traverse at all. So you should shoot at the main spots, which is the drive wheels right here. You could shoot at the road wheels for more you know, reliability of hitting the target, but the main weak spot is the drive wheels to detrack. So here is the example. As you can see, it's a Yag Tiger, shoot the tracks, and he becomes disabled. So I can easily outmaneuver to the back of him, and he is dead with my teammate's help. So pretty simple. And here is face hugging or stare down which is basically two tanks staring at each other 
and based on the frontal armor you should bounce a few shots and if you wiggle it's harder for them to hit the lower plate or your weak spots like commander hatches cupolas or whatever so here is the example we're by ourselves i decide to go to the t54 but there's a pan kr let's bully him <laughs> you think you're a tiger i'm a grizzly bear i don't care <laughs> i don't care about your shell don't let him flank you Keep your front towards him, and always ram him in the face. You try to shoot a cupola, I back off a little bit. Yeah, he's not gonna punch it. Yeah, yeah, you're about to shoot. Shoot the rotor vent. So there you go, folks. Face hugging. <laughs> Bullying pan KRs with a T1T E5. But that's how you do it. So they cannot shoot at your lower plate. They have to aim at your weak spot where you're wiggling. And it's a very good technique for one versus one. And here is one of the most important factors of the game. So it's the spotting slash camouflage mechanics. So basically bushes reduce vehicle visibility, friendly or foe, unless the vehicle is inside the bush. Trees do the same, but only with the leafy proportion, not with the trunks. You could knock down the trees and they become bushes. Also foliage would muffle the shots of your vehicles. So basically like a suppressor that reduces the flash only if the vehicle is shooting behind the bush or behind the tree because if you're shooting inside the tree or inside the bush this negates the muffling of the shots light tanks move with full camouflage rating other vehicles move with reduced camo shooting on the move or shooting the gun would reduce the camouflage rating and vehicles would automatically spot each other within 50 meters so very important to understand and utilize also, understand the penetration and the gunnery system. So, four different types of shells, AP, APCR, high explosive, and high explosive anti-tank. The normalizations for the shells are as follows. So, 5 degrees for AP, 2 for APCR, and 0 for high explosive and high explosive anti-tank. So, better normalization means more sloping negated, so better penetration. Also, penetration loss over distance is APCR over AP, over high explosive, and high explosive anti-tank. So you lose more penetration with APCR. Also, high explosive and high explosive anti-tank lose a lot more penetration with heavy space armor, such as tracks, mantlets, periscopes, guns, or even applicate armor plates. Sloping does increase the effectiveness of your armor plating, but it also defeats high explosive anti-tank and APCR a little bit more reliably based on the normalization so small stuff but very important and here are the vehicle tier lists so it's based on my opinion from a Unicom standpoint and the current meta game so just understand that it's only opinion based but here is the list for tier 5 so KV-1 very good KV-1S OI experimental because the alpha and the HP and the view range and the T67 very good tank destroyer with mobility speed DPM camo and view range the Sherman is pretty good so is the Chafee the KV220-2 is pretty good as a secondary T1 heavy and the Ram 2 so you can read about it here is the tier 6 preferably the Cromwells Sherman Easy 8s and maybe the T37 type 64 so all are pretty good choices here is the tier 7 namely the T29 the IS the E25 the SU12244 and some of the light tanks with the Comet so the Comet is one of the best medium tanks in the game here is the tier 8 with the Bias 3 the IS3 the T32 the AMX5100 the Pershing T54 lightweight and the WZ132. Here are the secondaries as you can see. So it's mainly the newcomers such as the Scorpion G, the Lech Panzer M41, and the RU251. So these are all good choices. Here is the tier 9 with the E75, the T54, the E50, the Waffenträger Panzer 4. So very good choices. And the upcomers are the T10, the M103 with the recent turret buff and the frontal hull buff and the yak tiger with a lot of hp buff so goes for the skoda t50 auto loading newcomer and finally at tier 10 we have the e5 because 
OPness, so the E5 somewhat outclassified the E100 and the IS7 as for the tier 10 heavy tank spot because the E5 has the armor, also has the mobility and the speed. So the E5 is pretty good. The T57 heavy has a lot of DPM, the Russian mediums as well, and the Bat Chat, the TVP 5051. If you want to play Tank Destroyer, the E3. So that's only my opinions, but it's based on the current meta and based on previous preferable vehicle tiers and tier lists. So here are my main insights and the epilogue. So it's always about you spotting your enemies and adjusting and then reacting. So if you can see them first and get your shot off, you would likely win. So this is characteristic of normal combat in actual warfare, characteristic of online gaming such as FPS or real-time strategy or MOBAs. So it's always sight and prediction. So if you know where your enemy is or if you know where they're going to be, then that's very important. So that gives you the edge over them. So then reaction is subsequent, but the important part is understanding where your opponent is and how they're going to behave. So the mini map and recognizing the mini map is one of it. So it's a factor of sight and prediction. But if you want to quickly understand how everything works, so the very simplest example is the ODA loop. So observe, orient, decide, and act. So if you can understand and effectively carry out this loop, then you would analyze the battlefield a lot more effectively, understand where your enemies are, and understand where they're going to go, and how you would ambush them, or, I don't know, react to them. So similar to Counter-Strike, similar to FPS, MOBAs, RTS, victory in World of Tanks requires quick thinking, decisive calls, and the capability of carrying out those, deci those decisions with or without your teammates. So sight is very important, then prediction, then reaction, and then repeat. So battlefield experience is best learned personally rather than being told. And here are the miscellaneous. So understand that it's a team-oriented game, so it's necessary to cooperate, cooperate and adapt. So you have to work in a team-like situation. So team effort, right? There will be failures, so just learn from them and move on. So do not dwell on the past. And everybody's human, so they are prone to mistakes. Don't hold grudges against your teammates or your enemies. They're just playing the game, so have fun. So in the end, it's only a game, go socialize and have fun. But this guide is very simple, so it's the basic of the basic, but it's for dummies, right? So hopefully you guys learn something about playing World of Tanks, learn something about the easy or basic mechanics of the game so you can understand how to perform a little bit better and be more competitive. But thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.